Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brad Hughesby. Today, we are talking 2023 prospects yet again. Um, these guys are in the middle of their junior season. Some of them having some big years, some of them having some solid years, okay years, whatever. Um, but Notre Dame recruiting is really looking good right now. All these dudes are playing exceptional ball. Um, I've yet to go to any of their specific games, but I'm hoping to get out to maybe a game or two, maybe see Drake Bowen. Um or Malik Elzey, but we will see. I'm going to start off, though, with Notre Dame's top quarterback target. They currently have three main guys to know about. Uh, Dante Moore from Michigan, uh, Avery Johnson from Mays, Kansas, and then Jackson Arnold um, from Guyer, Texas. I'll start with Dante Moore, though. Carnell, tweet, Carnell Tate tweeted a few days ago a picture of him and Dante Moore. Um Carnell loves to do this. Notre Dame has given him a ton of graphics, um, and he and he's posted them. He gets everyone excited. Him and Dante are probably the top two offensive targets. I'd I'd say probably Caden Proctor is is in that list as well. But um, right now, those guys are are the top of the the top of the crop. Um, when you ask any Notre Dame fan who do they want the most on offense, they're probably going to say either Dante Moore or Carnell Tate. Um, and if Carnell Tate commits, let's say this fall, because I think Dante Moore is going to need probably he'll probably go into the winter, spring, or even next summer to commit. Uh, when when you ask Carnell Tate, if Carnell Tate commits to Notre Dame, who's his number one target? He's going to say Dante Moore. Vice versa with Dante Moore. Um, these guys are friends. They hopped on calls with Tommy Reese um, on September first when college coaches can make initial contact with these recruits. These guys are are playing one and two on offense. Um, so we'll be talking about them a lot together, but Dante Moore is definitely the top quarterback target. Next up, um, Gilbert and Arnold are probably, or Johnson and Arnold, um, and, and John and Avery Johnson are probably the same. Um, excuse me, Avery Johnson and Jackson Arnold. Jackson Arnold was at, uh, Arkansas last weekend for the Texas game. Um, Avery Johnson, don't think he's been to a game yet this fall. Uh, I don't think he's getting up to Notre Dame, but he might be going up. I think he's going to Wisconsin uh, for the Penn State. You know, I'm trying to think of any other schools, but at the current moment, I can't think of any. Notre Dame pushes. I think they can land him. He's taking things no slow. Same with Jackson Arnold. This junior season will really be a big indicator on how much Notre Dame pushes. But at the end of the day, I don't think they, they give them committable offers until they see what happens with Dante Moore. Um, but that's just my stance on it. Next up, we'll go to a wide receiver, Kyle Casper from Arizona. Iowa legacy. His father played for the Cardinals for a few years. His Iowa, well, his father also attended Iowa. Um, the Hawkeyes are probably the leader, but UCLA um, got, I think, two visits out of him this summer. He really likes the, the Bruins and what they're doing over there um, in LA. Now, if Bama, if some of the big fish enter the picture, this recruitment will probably change. But Notre Dame is probably his biggest offer up to this point. USC might have offered as well, but Notre Dame's definitely up there. He grew up in Notre Dame. Kid was friends with Tyler Morris, uh, Reggie Florima, Caden Cobb, a few of these uh, these Chicagoland kids. So he's been in Notre Dame, loves Notre Dame, um, but living out in Arizona, he moved out there. I, I don't, I just don't know how big of a um, of a fan or how much of a fan he is to, to commit um, like Eli Raradon, for example, father played at Notre Dame. Grandfather was a strength and conditioning coach under Lou Holtz. Um, he was just a massive Notre Dame fan as a kid. It was his favorite weekend of the year going to South Bend um, to see the Irish play once a fall. So we'll see. Uh, but Notre Dame's definitely in the picture for Kyle Casper. Let's go back to Texas and talk about, Two DBs, Ryan Yates and Payne Bowen. Two kids who I do think end up in this class. I think Payne Bowen will actually commit uh, before the clock strikes strikes November. Uh, Bowen will be back for a USC for the USC game uh, in late October, October twenty third. I think that visit is just to make sure he loves South Bend as much as he did this summer. And uh, if all goes to plan, he'll commit after that. That's what I think. Uh, we could see something could happen, but. I think that's the only visit he's going to take this this fall. So that's a good sign. Absolutely fell in love with Notre Dame, the school, uh, the community, the defensive backfield, positional coach, uh, Chris O'Leary. He's a safety. Loves everything Notre Dame has to offer, and this kid is a stud. I think he's a five-star talent. I think he'll reach the top 40 or 50 when it's all said and done. 
plays for a powerhouse school down there in Texas, Denton High School, Denton Ryan High School, um, and he's just a freak of nature. Ryan Yates as well. Uh, USC Ole Miss, a few, a few of those schools have offered. Solid player. I don't think he's as good as, as, good as Bowen, just personally, but he's a very strong player. I think he's a, a four-star, 100% all across the board. Um, and if Bowen commits, I think that'll definitely push the eights to commit. They're teammates, good friends. They're also teammates uh, with Jackson Darnold, quarterback target. So three Notre Dame targets on one team, one on offense, two on defense. That's pretty significant. Let's go to some defensive linemen. Uh, Luke Montgomery, you're watching his highlights right now. Uh, he lives in Ohio, Finlay High School. Um, very, very talented player. Plays offense and defense as a two-way player. Being recruited uh, as a two-way player by some schools, but Notre Dame likes him more at defensive tackle. Um, Ohio State is probably the leader, but he's going to be at Notre Dame for the USC game at least. Might get out here again. Might get out to South Bend again, I should say. So we'll see what happens. Ohio State leads. He was at the Ohio State-Oregon game. Loved his time. But with Ohio State's defensive troubles, people aren't really sure. that This more impacts the 2022 class with guys like Nwangpa. Um, what's going to happen. We'll see. But I think Ohio State's his dream school. I do think he ends up there. But Notre Dame is definitely making this interesting. I think they're in second. Finally, Chan Davion Bradley, defensive end uh, recruit. N- Notre Dame has Keeley and Brendan Vernon committed. They're going to they're gonna relax a little bit on the defensive end spot. They have targets still out there. Uh, David Hicks from Texas. Chan Davion Bradley uh, from Missouri. Kennedy McDowell, a guy, a young man who I had the, the pleasure to interview from Frisco, Texas. They have a few of these guys still on the board. Who will come, who won't, I don't really know, honestly. Um, but if I had to call it right now, they don't take any more defensive ends. Um, and they just go with one or two interior guys like Luke Montgomery. Um, maybe they get Kendrick Gilbert. Uh, I think he's more of an inside guy from Indianapolis. But we'll see. It's early. It's still 2023. These kids are just in the middle of their junior seasons. So that's the video, guys. I appreciate all you guys for staying to the end. Make sure you like and subscribe. My name is Brad Hughesby, and that is it for me.